Hello, hello, and hello, and welcome to Root Workers Round the Table. It is Papa O. And Sister Sonia. How has everything been going for you? It's going. It's storming right now. How's it going at your house? It's storming. Oh, let me bring up something from last week. If you hadn't listened to last week, you need to go back because Sister Sonia talks about a spell she did in there. And then she pulled out the knife and every day we have had, we had storms. Yep. What did you do, Sister Sonia? You are, you are definitely a water witch. <laughs> Magical. It's all it, magic. You know, you pulled the knife out of the, <laughs> it's almost like the Bible. You smacked the rock and water came out of it. Hey, I don't claim to be Moses, though. No, you don't have the eyes for him. <laughs> Moses had? Well, actually, the, supposedly they all had something glowing about them, like glowing eyes. Noah's the one who had the glowing eyes. Oh. And, that, and that makes sense. Because it rained so much, you, you both had to do two by two with the animals. Seven by right. seven if they could eat them. <laughs> He had to stay in the dark for so long. Of course, his eyes were glowing. Craziness. Crazy. Speaking of the Bible, um, I was talking to our friend Abraham today. You uh, know. Yeah. And, and I was asking him about the lost books of the Bible. And there was a lost book known as the Testament of Reuben. Huh. I was, wow. My hubby is named after a significant character in the bible we didn't know that not in the bible though <laughs> bible removed from the bible but reuben his uh, testimony was all about uh fornication and sex and lust and how it that, got him in a lot of trouble it hmm. sounds pretty much like your husband well if he wasn't married to me <laughs> True. that's probably why he is married to me but you know Hey, you need somebody to keep up with him. Hey, it is what it is. It um, is. You know, I was watching something on the news today. Uh, have you been keeping up with the insurrection? Uh, hello, yes. Um, hello. Do you know that uh, they handed out one of the longest sentences today to a man who was charged with crimes of the insurrection? And guess what? What? He was black. A black man got handed the longest sentence. Oh, Tell me what is. Tell oh, me. Of course. Yeah. I don't understand that. I don't either. Ridiculous. We have let Nazis march in our streets, and yet we can't, we still can't get the race issue good. Why can't yeah. he be treated equal? I mean, yeah, did he go to the insurrection? Yes, he showed up for the party. But he should be treated like everyone else that was at the party, if you want to call it the party, the insurrection, whatever it is. They should be treated equally. Equally. I agree. It should be treated, it should be treated equally. Like all of, them, all of them should be executed for sedition. Burns my bottom. I I totally agree with uh one of the uh Sherman. Sherman's the one who said it that insurrection insurrection is sin and sin should be destroyed you know and you have to look at it that way you are you have you have left seeds of insurrection all over the place that people will have the idea to do it again if you believe in sin some people don't believe in sin some people just believe we just we just are and Send some, us a of, some of those some of those R's are assholes. <laughs> you know. Assholes. I think, I think when you agree to be in a community, you should start to like agree with there are some basic things that should be considered good, and there are some basic things that should be considered bad. Killing your neighbor, bad. Killing a family member, bad. You know, I don't think insurrection, bad, stealing, bad. 
you know, I now okay. I understand where we can see some, like, if somebody is stealing for food. But you know, I'm really quite at capitalism because why are you even? We're in the richest nation, and there are still people who hunger. I think sin, sin is a, about perspective too. It's all perspective. I agree. Where I do agree. you draw? And stealing. I mean, when does stealing become wrong? You know, diapers, stealing diapers in my book isn't necessarily wrong. It's sad. It's sad. I don't think it's wrong. But according to our laws, it's wrong. You know. But I, I agree with you. I don't think a lot of laws are taken into perspective. No. You know? And I think, honestly, I think that is one of the things that a judge is supposed to do, is to put things into perspective. This person was stealing food because they were hungry. Not this person just stole a company and made millions off the back of people. Exactly. You know? But dang it, shame on that judge that handed out that unequal sentence. Shame. Shame. Shame on him. <laughs> exactly. Because exactly. I'm going to tell you, it feels like we are walking on a borderline, you know, between the, between the oligarchy ruling and the people ruling, you know. I don't I don't, I don't see, well, I'll tell you what, I'll go for a good one first. The first good one is you will, we will, I guarantee we will run into a time where art is very big in the United States, that it will be a huge artistic movement. But as equally as the artistic movement comes in, there will be an autocratic an autocratic movement that comes in. I predict that, you know, I'm sort of recanting um, my thing, my thing with finding your star, because I really have a fear that we are not out of the time of towers. We are. We just started living in tower top. Byron Bower predicted it. What would you, how would you say to get out of it or to ease it any? I don't think there is a getting out of it. I think we're just going to have to adjust to it and move forward and rebuild. You know, is, would you say that there's a good possibility for rebuilding? Eventually, but not at the moment. No, no. I think. I think eventually, but right now, we've done a lot of damage as a human species. A lot of damage. And honestly, I think that, in my personal opinion, we are in the end times. Uh, I don't think that the world's going to end like in the biblical sense, but I think there's going to be an end at some point to where we're going to have to regroup and restart those people who are left here because we've done a whole lot of damage and there's going to be a major change there already is look at global warming look at the seas rising it's just I'm phenomenal gonna... damage we've done i look at my nephew and i am brain spun on how many things he will not be able to get to see that i have seen you know true true it, and i want to be honest um he will not be able to go out it to the beach if the beaches are clean enough without wearing a shirt or something to cover the skin as much as possible yeah to protect him from the sun's rays absolutely 
Did I tell you I went to see the doctor this week? You told me you were going to need to and your fistula, there was a spot that yes. needed to be taken care of. That is why I am wearing the <laughs> big hat now. You know, I agree with you when you said uh, pale is the new tan. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> we are showing the beginnings of skin cancers and that's our generation. Beware, beware. <laughs> Unless you want to get into the into a knife fight with the dermatologist, mm -hmm. beware, because they're going to win. The dermatologist is going to win. They're going to take big chunks out of you, and it's not going to be sharper fun. knives. They've got sharper knives. Mm -hmm. so, They've also screen, and they recommend to use it. So use your dang on sunscreen. And I know, I know, I had such a hard time with sunscreen when I was a kid because I did not like the way it felt. Oh, we were never forced to wear sunscreen. We used baby oil to burn so that we could eventually tan. I won't, I won't admit this on live production, but I did that too. Oh, see, you're admitting it. Yep. I, I, put, I put sun in, in my hair and then I I got into my tidy whities and I tanned because believe it or not, I tan really dark. I mean, I used to, well, I do now, but as a kid, I would burn really bad. And then if I didn't have sun in, I'd use peroxide. I've yeah. also used, I've also used uh, a little Jersey Shore. I used a uh, lemon in my hair. Ah, yeah, women. Um, did you, when you were younger, did you um, ever listen to REO Speedwagon? Of course. Journey and air supply. Oh my gosh, with sun in in your hair and baby oil on your bum. Oh my gosh. Laying well, out on the pit. Somebody was talking about uh, Hawaiian Tropic. Mm -hmm. And that's not a, that's not a sunscreen. That's a suntan oil. Yes, it is. And I'm going to, that smell is stuck in my mind. Like as somebody, as somebody already said, Hawaiian Tropic, I can, I, I can smell it. Yep. Sun tanning oil. Absolutely. And the dark brown bottle with the yes. gold letter. To me, it always reminded me of like, uh, it's going to sound crazy, an oily coconut. Yeah. Yeah. It was coconut plus some sort of smell. You're not really sure what smell it is. Like it's not coconut oil. It's like coconut and oil. <laughs> smells like the beach. It does. And yep. you know what else smells like the beach to me? That. Dr. Pepper. Oh, did you used to drink Dr. Pepper going to the beach? No, actually, that's why I can't drink Dr. Pepper now because there was a suntan lotion in the 80s that uh, a sun, yeah, suntan lotion in the 80s that was smelled like Dr. Pepper. It was like Dr. <laughs> Pepper branded and all of a sudden that I, you could smell that all over the Jersey Shore. And then what happened was when I came to college here, they had actual Dr. Pepper and I, I know nobody would believe me, but in my head, in my head, um, in I, head. Okay, go ahead. Zombie, zombie. I believe that it tastes like the sun, like I would imagine the sun lotion would taste. That's because you're a zombie. <laughs> I love it. Do I, you remember the shampoo? called g your hair smells terrific no but i've heard about it. it i do believe that probably predates you though but there was a 70s commercial about it and the girl would go walking into a room and someone would say oh gee your hair smells terrific <laughs> and it was an actual shampoo called g your hair smells terrific now my mom 
since before before I was born, before I was a little not before I was a little egg, but before I was uh, 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 introduced to sperm and egg. Um, oh gee. Well, I they had filling your mother's ovary. They they had Charlie, and that's what my mom still wears. And the ad used to be "Smell my Charlie." <laughs> you want to smell my Charlie? How that is very sad. And I'm going to tell you, '70s had, I think, a beautiful time of the lovers. You know. You know th- your mom remembers all my men wear aqua velva. Yep, or they wear nothing at all. <laughs> Yep, Aqua Velva, Charlie, gosh, those were the days. But that predates you. Oh my gosh, I am making myself look old with all that. It's all a matter of perspective. You're not old to the mountains. You're not old to me. And I'm not old to my grandma, who, well, no, dead. I can't say that. (laughs) Well, you're still not. Even though, do you know that you were inside of your grandmother? That is so weird. And I know that. And that is just like bizarre. The one thing also, a lot of people don't really look at female anatomy. Um, I was hearing today about this man and his wife was pregnant and she was taking a bath. Okay. And the water covered her stomach. And he totally freaked out because he believed that the baby breathed through the belly button. Oh my goodness. Well, the thing you're supposed to do when you're pregnant though is take really, really, really hot baths or get into a jacuzzi because you could injure the baby. Really? Yes, yes. Do you know that they also believe that if you went on a train that you could throw the baby out, <laughs> out of the train because it was moving so fast. If they could only, yeah, if they could only see what's moving fast now. Oh my goodness, that's crazy. Speaking of babies, Roe versus Wade is now legal once again in Kentucky, thanks to the Kentucky Supreme Court Justice. It's a tiny battle that's been won, a little battle that's been won. But we hit the made it happen. Little battles continue to roll. I know. I was reading today and I was telling my brother there are, let's see, 74 percent of women of voting age are registered to vote but 74 percent or 100 percent of the 74 percent does not vote and that's sad because we need every single female in america to be convinced the need to vote you need to get every gay every woman every african-american anybody who is getting oppressed by the system because if we don't stand up for each other, they're going to pull us apart one by one. Absolutely. One, you know, and don't think they won't. You know, on the next, on the docket next is gay, gay marriage laws. And are they legal? And sorry, they laws. To be able to protect that, though. I don't think that could be on the docket now. Really? We yeah. uh, five years ago we didn't think Roe versus Wade could be. True. At the moment, all was well with that. But again, it it's in danger. It can happen at any time. And I tell people, you, more like we live in Nazi Germany than we do the United States of America. Well, I'm going to tell you when I was saying that you, um, you can there's going to be a big arts movement is just because that's what Nazi Germany had. Each, that's what uh, 
Germany had during World War One, you know. So will this be? Is this a trend? Are we seeing? Are we seeing another time in history? Because I'm going to be honest, I don't know how everybody else is thinking. And if if any pagan votes for an autocrat, they should be they should be struck because after they're done coming from sexual and racial minorities, they are going to come after spiritual minorities. They really are, and they can. But I am a firm believer in voting for who you want to. I mean, I serve my country so that people can vote the way they choose to vote. That is exactly. I've been a free. Exactly, hmm? That's exactly. You know, I am glad that our military remembers what they're serving. You know, you are not serving an individual. You are serving the United States. But what the hell was I thinking? I served so that my daughters could have their freedoms to their bodies, and my granddaughters the hell was I thinking I I you've been hoodwinked hoodwinked oh speaking of hoodwinked how'd that go with you at the car dealership I am still I am still fit to be tied because Uh, the like I wasn't expecting to hear back from the car dealer but what I bait what I heard was all these other people who were going to go because they'll tell you that you won something. But honestly, all the pieces of everything they send out is the same. It is the same picture. Because people started showing me their ads. And the thing about it, as soon as you get there, they will take your ad and never give it back to you. And if you want to just I was thinking last night, you know, bottom line, if they're frauding you, if they are frauding you out of anything, at the very minimum, they are frauding you out of gas because they're telling you to come in. True. I went to a car dealership in California where they were having a giveaway and it was a, it was a a gift card, a Visa gift card. This was back in the early nineties. It was a $500 gift card. And I was like, well, that's awesome. You had to be present to win. And it was at the end of the day and Ruben and I were at the mall. So we went there, we filled it out and we're like, all right, there's only two or three people here present. And guess what? we won we won the gift card i wanted to spend the gift card on christmas someone had already used the gift card yes my god they had already scratched off the little thing on the back and had got the numbers now the car dealership made it right or maybe it was visa i'm not sure but can you imagine i'm gonna go and buy taylor a skateboard and yeah, they had already used the gift card or Allie, one of the two. But anyway, the point is, is that they gave away a gift card that had already been used. The, see, that that was an accident. Because still God, kind of- God knows who used the card. Right. You know? um, if they did online, you could probably figure it out. But, you know... It was not intentionally, they weren't intentionally trying to trick you. These people were intentionally trying to trick the area. Allie and and Bobby got one once and they're like, did I win this? And I'm like, no, don't even bother. You're gonna gonna get there and they're gonna say you didn't win anything. I do it all the time. They need somebody to call their bluff and do like a, class action lawsuit or something i agree you know Um, i'm not gonna do it but because i don't think that this is my 
battle, you know. But I I sure is put the put the put the landmines, or I should say depth charges in the water. You know, I yeah. sent I sent it out to everybody. Anybody I know. It's gonna be on my it's gonna be on my <laughs> Christmas cards. Happy <laughs> Christmas. Did you know what this company did to me? Exactly. Tell everybody you know. Speaking of money and gift cards and Christmas and all of that, the Mega Millions is now the Mega Billions. $1.2 billion, bruh. I so, mean. So we buy tickets tomorrow? Yes, I've been buying tickets. We can buy tickets. <laughs> but that's why it's, it wasn't for you. It's for me. <laughs> <laughs> It's on Friday, and you know, I was thinking about it. I may, I, I've been praying, right? Because um, Big Daddy, Father God, I was like, you know, having a little talk with them in the car, and I was like, if you would allow me the blessing of such a large abundance, I would like take care of everybody. But then again, I thought about it this morning. Do you know how many prayers he's getting about this lottery right now? And and if they're if, if father if there truly is a father god and there's a satan it's kind of funny he's probably looking at satan and saying hey gambling's like your department along with you know sin and and all these things so i'm gonna let you take care of that okay and then here's my, if huh? i think i think gambling is a hoot <laughs> so <laughs> i don't I, I can't see how that's sinful so he's gonna give it to satan right and satan's gonna be like crackhead with gambling addiction and you win yeah and then they're gonna blow it all away they're gonna blow through that money faster than a drug dealer blows through a speed trap on a saturday night oh. just like, gone gone and that's how, or it's gonna be ironic that a person that doesn't need it like a multi-millionaire be like oh, oh, oh i just won 1.2 billion dollars to stack upon the millions i've already gotten I'm going to tell you, both my father and grandfather played the, played the lottery like crazy. Like, I am not even joking. Like, they would, they would spend like $100 on a lottery. And well, you really need to play because honestly, I'm going to be honest. When I was in the Navy, I had an officer that I worked for. He won $7.5 million and I worked for him. And then a few years later, there was a patient at the pharmacy where I worked and she won a couple of million. And there's a man in Glasgow that won the million here locally. Do you remember him last year? Yeah. He asked Allie if I was happily married because he thought that I was cute and I was really nice to him. I said, oh, Ruben, we need to come up with some kind of contractual agreement, but that's neither here nor there. The point is, is I've known, personally known, three people that have won over a million dollars, the largest 7.5 million. So it would behoove everybody who knows me to play because I know people who have won. Three people swear, swear, or have been associated with three people who have won the lottery over a million dollars so why would the people that know me not play considering you know i'm not lucky to win it but the people around me have won it so why not and then just give me a little you know a little bit off the side because come rub my belly i guess i don't flipping know <laughs> you know we gotta <laughs> what would you roll that in if, like i would I think we should do a money spell for it. And like, do you use coffee? Do you use hot pepper? Like, do you use chocolate? We, definitely, we take our dollar bill, right? And we put, what did we put in it before? We used high John oil to like, mm -hmm. um, get it all fired up, and motivated, spark it up. And then we, we use cayenne. And some coffee, cinnamon. I think we used a cinnamon. Uh, some basil. No, was it basil? It was something green. Yeah. Some lodestone. Yep. Yep. 
Roll it all you up in that bad boy. Do you know where those are? Hmm? Do you know where those are? Lodestones? Probably at your house. Do you have? Yes. They are inside yep. my, um, they are inside my uh, Rose of Jericho. So they're closed up right now. So I should put some water in there so they can start expanding again. Open it up, and then you can actually make a money spell candle. How and do you, you can do that? Hmm? How do you do that? I'll just dress it. I like to take the um, the seven day candle with the African saints on it. I get it at our local uh, Mercandito Latino, the Latin mer merchandise merchant yeah. maker. How black I can't talk. And then I will. Uh, I like the number nine. So I put nine holes in it and then I dress it with oils and herbs and just, you know, rub my little magic into it and light that sucker up. Little money candle. I gotta, I gotta say something. What's that? I was on TikTok earlier and there was a folk magician and he was like, do you... They asked me, do I use glitter or crystals in my study or in my workings? No. And that's where I was like, you know, the best folk magic practitioners are the ones who are willing to start thinking outside of the stuff. What do I got here? You know? Use what you have. And I'm I mean the best ones are just using what you have like the dirty dish rag we talk about or salt in your mop water i gotta or... tell you i gotta tell you i saw a dirty uh a dirty rag in the middle of the road and i was like i know what that is and the crossroads yep 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 you sure do know what it is. A lot of people just use what use what you got on hand. Uh, again, I'm going to mention Byron. Byron has a, a coin purse spell in one of her books to where it's just a little coin purse and you just add like candies and coins and maybe a little coffee and you just put your little intentions into it and you leave this little coin purse open and if you find something silver, you put in it. You just keep putting your little intentions in there and make your make your pocketbook grow. I am going to tell you. Um, in Hazel, Kentucky, there there was Meemaw, okay. Meemaw, man. yep. And Meemaw was, she would make the best black mirrors, but you know what she would do? She'd be like, "Oh, honey, I'm just going to put." some epoxy on here and then I'm going to rub some glitter around and then I'm going to put a piece of black felt on it and it worked as a black mirror and what I just is a black it is a divination thing you can use it to see into the future it's it's fine it's like looking into a crystal ball oh it's black it's now Glenda had different colors of felt, so during during Yule, you can get a red and green one, and for Samhain, you could get a purple and orange one. So, cool. because she was not going to waste all that felt, because she got the she got the Sunday school bag of felt. You know, like you get a whole bunch of colors. Yes. So maybe so, she made four black. Oh, I that. I remember Sunday school felt <laughs> and the uh, construction in all the different colors. Yes. But, you know, she wouldn't think twice about using uh, construction paper. You know? And Use one, what you got and One of the coolest things, she's the one who taught me about carrier spirit. And the way she taught me about it was we had, we had the food for a festival out back and, and 
a bunch of ants got into it. And she was like, oh, honey, don't worry about the piss ants. They're just bringing your prayers, prayers to the goddess. And I was like, you are actually, you are actually right. I totally agree with that, you know? And she made me this wand. No. Did you see my shirt I have on tonight? I did not. What Basic. Basic witch. Yeah, isn't it cute? It looks like a Starbucks symbol, only it's a witch, and it's basic witch. I love it. Well, isn't it a goddess symbol on it anyways? Uh, The Starbucks symbol? I'm not I'm sure. sure. I'm pretty sure it's a... I don't want to say 100%, but it's La, I think it could be La Sarin. Um, but I'm not... I'm. Don't quote me. Don't use me as a total reference. Use two references if you're going to reference me about that shirt. <laughs> you know, we both are wearing headdresses today, too. You're wearing your hat, and I decided to wear my little my little bee wrap. I like it. I'm going to tell you, anytime you, you, see, you see me, I will have my head covered with something. Really? Always now? baseball caps uh yeah oh i i felt that i felt that i should push it a little bit more ah uh, push it mur, 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 mur. Uh, push it push real good i like you in a baseball cap it, make, it makes me look younger uh -huh. but i decided spiritually i feel like i should look more and more like a final fantasy's character <laughs> that's a joke a final fantasy character mm -hmm. i feel like i'm starting to look like the the black witch in final fantasy one you can I'm look it up watch it. it it was a video game in the 90s early 90s hmm. it's what started the the whole role-playing online games oh role-playing games that is okay. spooky. <laughs> spooky. <laughs> you know I throw myself off in a role-playing game in a heartbeat just to get out of it <laughs> you <laughs> next all right so i need to go to the kitchen and eat snacks <laughs> yes, I gotta i'm do. terrible at those things but i make I'm some pretty good, good actress when it comes to hmm I make some good snacks. You do. You do. We all make some good snacks. Yeah. Uh, and I love that. I got to tell you, my, my mom went to go to a party at my aunt's where they were watching Downton Abbey. Okay. And they only had popcorn. I was like, how am I related to you? This would have been a Downton Abbey themed party. We would figure out Downton Abbey things to eat, <laughs> you know, being upstairs we were, and downstairs. Um, have you been watching any uh, any television lately? Have you been watching us? I've been watching a series called P Valley. Have you seen it? Mm -mm. Oh my gosh, it's on I Star. <laughs> we don't have real TV. I okay. sure. P Valley is on stars and uh, Uncle Clifford, he's the most beautiful trans man. He's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Uncle Clifford. Mm -hmm. He runs a club. My I had an Uncle Clifford. He runs a strip club. He's amazing. I, I've been really enjoying that show. Well, tell us a little bit about it. Why do you like it? Okay. So P Valley is about a strip club that it, the, the series takes place in a little town in Mississippi, but it's actually based on some true things that have occurred in Memphis. Like one of the things that happened on the show was based off of a crime that actually took place in Memphis. Uh, it's a family strip club and it goes back for generations and 
Uncle Clifford, he is uh, trans and he is currently in a relationship with someone who just got out of prison who found, discovered that he was gay from being in prison. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's just a good story plot. Uh, Uncle Clifford's goal is to take every stripper and make them a better person. And then for them to eventually retire from stripping and leave and do something much better with their lives, whether it's saving their stripper money to go to college or to buy a new house or to own their own business. It's really good. Of course, there's all kinds of drama. But I'm not Um, here to also judge sex workers. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not here to judge sex workers. No, not at all. If you love it, God bless, you know? It's a job. It is. Yep. It is. It's a job. My cat is going absolutely crazy. He likes to do that. One of the funny things <laughs> is. Oh, speaking of that. I got to tell you this. Pros- prostitution used to be one of the only ways women could work in a society. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Keep their own money and their own business and their own property. Um, speaking of judging, I went to my dad's house the other day. And he made me very proud. He said that that is the one thing that he has learned from me as his adult daughter is not to judge. That he used to judge a lot of different people. And he told me that I have taught him not to judge. That what a person wants to do in their life is what they want to do. And it is no one else's business. It brought me to tears. I was like, my 70 something old father is now non judgmental. Isn't who that great? Right? Who taught us all how to make uh, cornbread? Yes, yes, biscuits. he did. It yep. was biscuits, wasn't it? Or was no, it cornbread? It's cornbread, my, my mom's cornbread recipe. Mm-hmm. I have to do that on TikTok more often. I need to do stories with dad because he's got some of the funniest stories the greatest stories and I just found out recently that uh my great great grandmother she believed in witchcraft she didn't practice witchcraft but she believed that witches would be responsible for her butter not churning properly and if she couldn't sleep at night and her mind was like a wandering she was like that's because the witch took your mind and put it in a horse a horse's brain and then the horse just took off the witch smacked it and it took off and i said oh my gosh i have ancestors that really believe that if you couldn't sleep at night that was the work of a witch butter wouldn't turn yep that's a witch i was like oh my gosh you know that with milk and cream they used to put a ball at the top of it a blown glass blue ball and they thought it would catch a witch before it spoiled your milk oh yeah because witches would spoil your milk there's a song called churn butter churn Mm -hmm. and they would keep uh the witches away from the butter you got it it's so wild if only my ancestors knew they do know they're like oh my gosh we do (laughs) have one she's one of those no we were one too but we didn't know it my great 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 grandmother Polly, there is a um there's a letter that I found on ancestry.com and her great grandchildren said that when she would get angry, if she entered a room, if she was angry enough that furniture would move and uh, that she just had that kind of energy. And my dad said, Well, when I got angry when you were little, furniture would move too, but I'd throw it. I was like, Oh dad. <laughs> he ain't lying though. <laughs> my my parents both had weird instances with that with me. Um, I remember I won't say which one, but this person was yelling at me, and I started talking in tongues. And the person yelled at me, "What are you doing?" And I looked at the person. I said making it rain and at that happened it started raining talking in tongues what you know about talking in tongues sometimes sometimes the spirit just comes over to me and when the spirit because i i was not raised in a 
religion of tongues. Nope, you weren't. But, but all of a sudden, sometimes the spirit comes over to me and or comes over me and I feel I just let my mouth move and the words come out. Hmm. Glossophilia. See, I could I could work at a Pentecostal church. I know some of the stuff. <laughs> Gonna get me some religion. Yep. It to me the Bach has lost his damn mind. Have you been reading? About him lately who the pastor greg Locke, the one in tennessee the one that had the tent revival around well, I gotta, well i gotta tell you about that because he claimed that i was a renowned witch from around the world so i am now going to use that on my resume i sent him uh i sent him postcards that told him to have the day that he deserved and blessed be and you know, all these good little witchy things that I put on these postcards that I sent them. I think I told you that. And I loved it. And did you, oh my gosh, I could just go on and on and on about that man. He's fascinating. He is so evil that he is absolutely fascinating. It's like a cult. He's like oh, yeah. a cult following. And I'm going to tell you, I, when I went to Cauldron Fest, he was infiltrating Cauldron Fest by coming up uh, some of the some of the trails. Okay, so we all had to. Those the speakers all went into their buildings, and the then the the Osatru or the heathens basically made sure that everything was secure. I never saw them so happy in my life that them becoming protectors, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. So how is he going crazy now, though? He's just, did you not read the story about how he had a woman in his office that he was performing an exorcism on, and then she told him the name the, the the demon that came forth from her told him the name of like four witches in his congregation and that he's going to come out and expose the name of these witches. And he's just, I mean, he's just insane right now. And this monkeypox thing, you ain't like, going to get me, devil. I'm going to stay open, devil. I'm like, oh my God. I am going to tell you that he is just like Kenneth Copeland trying to get another plane. He Kenneth wants Copeland's he wants his first plane. You know? Can we like go infiltrate these churches and just like sit there? They fascinate me. I'm not kidding. I mean, like my aunt had the same type of church, but why doesn't she have like a mega church? Because she's just like them. I want to know what they do that gets them the mega church crowd versus someone who's just like them who doesn't have that could it be satan that's <laughs> uh, <laughs> with the devil i don't know it's weird it's the cult of personality these people have the personality they and what what makes me crazy is that they make you believe that the richer you make them, the more God is going to hear you. Oh my gosh. There's a pastor on TV. He'll probably sue me for this, but his name is Seaflow Money. <laughs> and they just, these little old people, they just, it's sad. In her opinion. It's all their money. In her opinion. Say in in what, your opinion. In say, my, in my. Like, see, you don't want you don't want anything crazy to happen. True, true. You don't want to be in the court with him. See, see, flow money. No, no. That mm -hmm. may may not want to be in the court with them, but hey, daddy, 
I mean, come on. He just, I mean, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I would well, not make Well, daddy. then the lawsuit can also help you out there. <laughs> he solicited me at my place of business. Who did? No, I'm saying that you were saying, <laughs> as a prostitute, he solicited me at my business. What's your business, ma'am? Got to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. The world has just gone bananas. And people are putting all their faith and all their money into these mega churches. Thinking that they're going to get them through the pearly gates. I don't know. The thing that I often think about is when they're thinking about getting through the pearly gates, where he says, give unto Caesar what is Caesar's, give unto, give unto mine what is mine, you know? Hmm. You, to me, if you're saying, and see, to me, I think, uh, separate, as a, as a religious leader, I think separation of church and state is a necessary thing. Yes. Oh, you know, speaking of mega, mega churches, we have a really, really, really big church here in Glasgow. And a family, one family donated all the money to build that church. Yep. And you know where the church is. Uh -uh. Carl Hill Road. That's oh. that's right near me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the one that has the axe throwing and all that stuff. Maybe. I don't know. I think it's that it's named after two bodies of water. I think so. Yep, 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 yep. I'm like, hmm. They do axe throwing there. Of course, they're gonna do. Did <laughs> that church? They have a little bit of everything. That's that's the whole thing. They, from my mouth to God's ears, in my opinion, they become cults. What, what is it, like Target? That's like Satan, and they throw axes at yeah. Satan. Right. Yeah, they throw axes at it. Oh my God! It's a new sport, but I think that they, the idea of these mega churches. And my sister totally would mega church it, just to let you know. Um, but they try to keep you there. They try to get you to work, like spend all your time here. We got a pool. We got gymnastics. We got, We've got coffee. Scouts. What? We've got coffee and donuts. Well, I'm going to tell you, most churches got me at that. I'd be like, sure. Coffee and donuts? I'm there. <laughs> And they have different um, different campuses. Like the, I went to a church locally when I was still going to church, and the pastor was in Bowling Green, Kentucky. But the campus, one of the campuses, was in Glasgow. And you walk in, you grab your cup of coffee, you go and you sit down. There's a big movie screen, and you watch the you watch the preaching on the screen, and you're sipping your coffee, and you're good to go. See, I went to. Uh, they call it six uh, six flags under Louisville or six flag. They make fun of it because it's a really big site and it's in Louisville and it's a mega church where they do have extension offices. I went to that a few times and one of the times that I went the the it's a the minister who sings at the beginning. What are they? It's like a cheer club. Yeah. And he basically said, even pagans would like the music that we're putting out. And I'm like, you're damn right. You got drums, you got instruments. Uh, it was. It's honestly, like rock. It's, it's like, like a circus. Like during Christmas, they have a live menagerie. Yes, have you been to one? They're beautiful. I have yet to be to. I have yet to go to one. 
I'll take you to the one in Brownsville. They're so pretty. And they have like the camels and they have, it's like Why don't you're walking. Why the one in Louisville? Hmm? Why don't we go to the one in Louisville? We can go to the one right here in Brownsville or Bowling Green. Then you have to choose the best one. I love the one in Brownsville. I haven't been to the one in Bowling Green yet. Okay. The one in Brownsville has camels and donkeys and little live baby Jesus. I guess they birth a baby and then they pick one. I don't know. Whose baby's the youngest? And they got the baby. And then everybody's dressed up like Joseph and Mary. And I don't know. It's great. I I have to tell you this. My mom has done one of these. My mom, every, every, every year in Cookville, her church does a live menagerie. Oh, cool. It, I have a picture on Facebook of me in the angel wings and the angel robe. Yes, I too was an angel at a, at a little Christmas thing. No. Here, here's, where, here's where my bitterness comes. I was never a wise man. I was never Joseph. I was always, I was not an angel. I was always a shepherd. Oh, always a shepherd. I thought at least by 16 or 17, I get to be Joseph. But no, there's somebody younger than me who's playing Joseph. What? How did I miss this? How did I totally miss this going on? Where did, where was my Jesus? Where was my Joseph? No, where was my wise man? I could have been Melchior. You were totally hoodwinked. I was. I. To, that's that's why now I can get to play any character I want. <laughs> I was the angel because my mom's church had food, and she's like, "We're having a Christmas thing. You should come and eat food." Oh, definitely, we'll come and eat food. And they're like, "Sonia, put this angel costume on and go outside for a minute." Okay. I'll eat food and put on the angel costume and go outside and wave at people. Sure. And that's how Sonya became an angel. Yep. Not that I'm an angel anyway, but. They could see a halo, your halo. <laughs> I see your halo. Yep. Hello. <laughs> my, my aura, my aura. Were you beautiful? I was beautiful. I'll have to send you the picture. I was still a shepherd. That means I wore a schmock and a thing on my head. I'm going to have to show you the picture of me when I was in church when I was a little girl. And we all wore the same dresses. And it's the dresses that my Aunt AD would make. And I just looked pitiful. I looked like, like um, I don't know. You know the, that family on TV uh, that have like 18 kids and counting? Oh, my God. Do you know about that? that? I look like I was a little girl in a cult. Don't go there. Don't go there. Everybody else in the same dresses. And I was like, oh, dear God, I do not want to be here. Like, this is not my thing. Do you know that one of the, one of the brothers was a child molester? Yes, he's in prison. I know. I couldn't believe it. With his own sister. You know, it's his mom and dad's fault. Because they yeah. wouldn't let him for the world see that's one of the that's one of the misunderstandings with um i feel with fundamental christianity is that they don't allow their kids to explore now i will have to i'm going to put this in that also pagans do that where pagans will not allow their kids to truly study magic and study philosophy because they didn't want what their parents did to them by pushing Christianity. And I wasn't saying, you know, you have to push it, but take pride in your own culture, take pride in your own religion, you know? We did not um, push religion onto our children at all. Look what's what's happened. Look what's happened, I'm just kidding agnostic daughter and then there's betty baptist taylor 
So, and they're both wonderful, beautiful human beings. Mm-hmm. One's Agnes, one's Baptist. A, B. Ruben at once was Christian. That's C. I mean, it's we we didn't we didn't push that on our kids, and they grew up to be who they wanted to be. To me, though, a lot of good good of moral good morals can be found within religion. You know, hmm. that's debatable. You don't think that that there's good that there are good moral teachings in some. There's good morals in people, not necessarily religion. But religion, religion Religion sort of values, right? We have our own set of morals, and then a religious value is placed out there. I guess, I guess, I could, I could deal with that semantics. Yeah. Um, But I, uh, religion gets bad when it it when you do not allow the child to discover. When you, stop, when you stop discovery, you know, allow them if they say, you know, I'm not feeling this, let me try going to this. Be open with the child. You know, you don't know what spirit you're really dealing with. So allow yourself to allow them to investigate. Do you want to hear something funny that's happening with you right now? Your hat looks like a sheet and you look like you're either like you're laying in the bed and you've got like this sheet over you and it's like bedtime stories with Papa O. (laughs) I would totally do that. It's cute. Like you're wrapped up in your sheet and you're just talking like we're having a slumber party or we're talking and we're not supposed to be because it's late so you've got your sheet over your head and you're like okay i'm having this conversation i'm not supposed to be on the phone you know i'll be honest sometimes i still feel like that (laughs) (laughs) i can't i'm 44 but i can't stay up longer than this you know (laughs) if so we have to hide under our blankets oh gosh my phone just fell speaking of hiding in time and all that our hour on zoom is about over Well, thank you, everybody, for coming, listening to us. I hope it stops raining one of these days. And it rained for quite some time, honestly, at least this week. I got worried. I saw two morning doves flying together. I didn't ask them where they were going, but I saw them flying off. I was like, "Mm, it's raining. And why is this happening? Mm. Sister Sonia. Kentucky does have an arc. We have well, an arc. We do. It doesn't float, but we have an arc. Exactly. Be kind to one another, love one another, reach out to one another. And like Grandpa Sackwitz always used to say, Don't be an asshole. Don't be an asshole, but win the lottery. <laughs> Billion. Exactly. Good night. Good night.